We're at the hotel today, so that means uh, instant coffee, unfortunately. But you know what? Instant coffee's not actually that bad. I don't mind it. It's fine. In a pinch, it's fine. When you just need coffee and you need it to be instant, If you've been following me here on YouTube or anywhere else on social media, you know that I travel a lot for work. And when you travel a lot, you start to develop strategies and routines and everything to make your travel easier. I even recently made a video about my essential travel items. But another thing that comes with traveling is I end up doing my video editing and content creation in you know remote areas, in media centers, and in, in hotel rooms like this one here, or at coffee shops. And I'm never in a proper office with a proper office chair and proper ergonomics, which ended up taking a big strain on me. But recently I started using what I believe is the perfect portable video editing setup that you can take with you in a backpack in a small bag pretty much anywhere. So let's hop into it. So as some background, for years, I was just editing on my laptop with the trackpad, hunched over like this, like a T-Rex, and obviously that ended up really poorly affecting my posture. This came to a head at the Spa 24 earlier in 2023. When I was coming home, I was having a long layover, sitting in an airport lounge, and leaning over like this, and I actually strained my SI joint. And I was in a lot of pain for uh, quite a few days. I ended up going to see my doctor and they said, hey, you've gotta do something about your posture and strengthening your lower back. So I did what most people would do. I took that really seriously for like two weeks until my pain went away. And then I just stopped doing my exercises and stopped caring. But then later on, I saw a photo of myself that someone took in the media center in Japan. And I was again, hunched over like a T-Rex. And I said, okay, something needs to change. So I started looking at different solutions to this posture problem. And I noticed that a lot of people in the media center use laptop risers. And I thought, hmm, it's interesting. Maybe I should try that. And yeah, it's super obvious, Mark. You should just get a laptop riser and lift your laptop up. So I went and did that. I spent the most important $20 of my life and bought this very simple collapsible laptop riser that's portable. You can take it anywhere. It's got a little rubber on the bottom so the laptop won't move. And it's adjustable to many different heights for however high up you like to sit. I just got it on Amazon. It was super cheap and it just allows me to lift my MacBook up. Now I'll take an aside to say, a oh, question I get asked on social media a lot is like, why do you edit on a laptop? Why don't you just have an editing PC? Well, it's pretty obvious. It's because I travel a lot. So I can't really take an editing PC with me on the road. So I just use this M1 MacBook Pro, which of course I ordered and custom built right before they announced the M2s. It's always the way it happens, but it's a workhorse. It's 64 gigs of RAM. It's a one terabyte hard drive. Since I keep most things on external drives anyway, and I can render really quickly and export quickly. I do have a couple issues with the screen. There's some indentations already. MacBook screens are uh, known for being having pretty weak screens. So any sort of like little crumbs on the keyboard, if you close it, you can damage the screen, but it also has a dead pixel in it as well. It's not crazy, it's not a huge problem, but eventually I will take it in to get it fixed. So pairing the laptop riser with the MacBook just raises that up, but you'll notice that I now can't really use the trackpad or the keyboard, at least not in an ergonomic way, having to lift my arms up like that. So I paired it with a very cheap Bluetooth keyboard. I think we bought this one at a liquidation store. I can't remember. Uh, we bought it to use like with our smart TV for like Netflix and YouTube. Uh, so I just use that. It works great. It needs to be charged like once every six months and it works really well. Uh, and yeah, I'm a video editor. So of course it has RGB, you know, party mode. And then I also pair it just with like a really cheap like Logitech Bluetooth mouse and a mouse pad that I found in my closet. So that works really well. It allows me to just sit up perfectly straight, use the keyboard, use the mouse and be in a much more comfortable position. And I will say I've used this setup pretty much everywhere in airport lounges, in media centers, in hotel rooms. And yeah, you can look kind of silly, you know, because you're setting up all this stuff, but your shoulders and your neck and your back will thank you. Now you notice the one other thing I have in this setup is my iPad. Now I use this in sidecar mode, which is a mode that MacBooks have where they can pair basically to an iPad and use them as an extended display. So I use this when I'm in Premiere Pro to have my media bin down there. Now here you'll see it's just sitting on the table. So maybe not as ergonomic to have to look down at it, but sometimes if I just have like, you know, a GoPro box or something around, I'll raise that iPad up. 
I will say uh, it does disconnect every now and then. It's not a perfect thing, the sidecar, at least not with this laptop. So now and then it'll freeze. You have to disconnect it and reconnect it. Uh, you can connect it uh, via Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. I don't really know how that works. It all seems like magic to me, but I usually just connect it with a USB-C to lightning cable, which you'll see in the setup here. And then it's keeping the iPad charged all the time as well. But I find this setup works really well because I can extend my timeline and then I have the media bin down there. I can scrub through clips and it just makes me much more efficient. And there's even been times when like I've been on an airplane and there's been no one sitting next to me and I've had my laptop in my lap and I've put the iPad there and done the, the sidecar because it's just so much easier for me to get work done that way and so much more efficient. It's taken some getting used to because for years I edited just with the trackpad, which a lot of people told me was absolutely insane and what are you doing? But I spent a lot of time sitting on the train, riding into downtown Toronto or on airplanes. And I even developed like a two thumb like editing system for when I was in Premiere Pro. And now I've had to take some adjustment to go to a mouse, but now I don't really think I can ever go back. This has been so much better for me, better for my posture, better for my shoulders. And again, it's just so much more efficient having the sidecar and everything and able to just get all of my work done in a very comfortable position. So if you're wondering uh, how much everything costs, uh, the laptop riser, like I said, there's different ones on the market uh, on Amazon. You can take a look. They're between you know 15 and $30. I think this one was 20. Uh, the Bluetooth mouse, I think I paid 12 or $13 for it. Uh, the mouse pad, like I said, I found it in my closet, but a mouse pad like that runs $4 at Staples. Uh, and the Bluetooth keyboard, I think it paid $10 for at a liquidation store. The iPad is obviously the most expensive thing. Uh, this one is, I think, a ninth gen, and it ran about $350 to $400. Uh, I'm saying the dollar amounts in Canadian dollars because I'm from Canada. So uh, you can convert that to whatever your local currency is. But you don't have to buy an iPad. You can buy uh, other small displays. I've seen video editors that even have one that they can mount vertical sometimes to do their preview on if they're doing a lot of vertical video. And I've seen people even have a setup where there's two screens and it attaches to your laptop and you have basically like you look like you're on the Death Star like you're on mission control uh, and yeah people give you weird looks in the media center um, they give me weird looks for this too and the first time I set it up people were like wow Mark you setting up an Apple store and the people still like to make barbs about it but you know what I don't mind setting up mission control okay tell me how your neck feels in five years but again, if you're just buying like a little cheap display screen, I think you can get them for less than hundred bucks on Amazon. The color is not gonna be super great, so you're not gonna be able to use it for color grading. But if you're just using it for your media bin or like to watch YouTube while you're working, there's no problem with that. But the iPad is a good shout for me for traveling because I also just like use it as a TV, watch YouTube on the plane. So it's perfect to act as a secondary screen. And then when I get back to the hotel, I can just use it to watch Netflix or whatever. So works perfectly for me. So that's a quick look at the portable editing setup that I take on the road with me. Nothing fancy, nothing crazy, but it works perfectly. And I honestly, again, the 20 bucks I spent on that laptop riser changed my life. Something so simple, but so effective. If you're interested in this exact laptop riser, there is a link in the description below. It's an Amazon affiliate link, so I do get a very small commission if you buy it. I'll be very transparent about that, but it's just a really easy way to support creators that you like. Be sure to also check out my essential travel items video if you wanna see more of the items that I always take on the road with me as a motorsport videographer. And let me know in the comments below how you set up your gear and how you do your editing when you're on the road. Thanks so much for watching. I'll just sign off by saying likes, shares, subscribes. It all goes a really long way, and we'll see you in the next one.